This week's episode is the author's podcast about author lingo, and I'll be talking about the different words and terms commonly used by writers. And now, it's time for the intro! Hello and welcome to the author's podcast about. The podcast where we journey together into the wonderful world of writing. Each week, this podcast will talk about a particular writing-related subject and teach you how to turn your idea into a book and then get it published with all of the steps along the way. Hosted by author Brett Jackson, this is The Author's Podcast About. and welcome to this week's episode. My writer's life this week has literally just flown by. Here's a short summary of what happened. As some of you may know, we'll be moving house during summer, and this week we had some removal firms around. I joined a couple of Facebook writers' communities, and the famous London Book Fair happened. Although I didn't go this year, there were lots of author friends I know who did. Holly Line, Sasha Black, and Shane Miller, to name a few. There were lots of great pictures on social media. It looked absolutely fantastic and I can't wait to go next year. And that is the end of my Writer's Life update this week. So now, on with this week's episode. In this week's episode, I'll be talking about author lingo and going through the technical language and words of the author world. When I started writing this episode, it began as a list of terms and reminded me of a dictionary. In the interests of being interesting, I've rewritten it so that you can take away more from it, giving you a chance to relate to situations where you're more likely to experience these words rather than just being a boring, long toilet roll of a list. When you start your journey to become a writer or an author, you can be forgiven for getting a bit confused with the lingo. For a start, are you a writer or an author? Most people will say these words mean the same thing. From personal experience, I can tell you that they're very, very different. When I first started writing, I would introduce myself as a writer, and the response would be, well, what do you do for your real job? After I became published, I felt like I'd become an author. So that's what I would tell people. The response then was completely different. People would ask where my books are, and how they could get hold of them. They've even asked me to sign their copies. So let's break down a couple more terms that are used in everyday language. We've established that when you first start writing, you are a writer. But what are you writing? The document you're working on is usually called a manuscript, also known as your WIP, W-I-P, or Work in Progress. Inside your work in progress, you'd usually include a hero, also known as a protagonist, an anti-hero or villain, or antagonist, some side characters, which I talked about in the last podcast, and some minor characters. Once you've finished your manuscript, you'll need to have it edited. Editing your manuscript involves several different processes. Proofreading is one of those processes and a proofreader will fix spelling mistakes, sometimes called typographical errors or typos for short. As well as fixing spelling mistakes, there will inevitably be some grammatical errors, such as long sentences or commas in the wrong place, perhaps a capital letter where they shouldn't be, or maybe no caps where they should be. You may also come across the term Oxford comma. An Oxford comma is a standard placing of a comma derived from rules created by Oxford University. It's usually used after the second to last item in a list, before the word and or the word or. After that, you'll probably be looking for an editor. There are many different types of editors. A copy editor tends to carry out the role of a proofreader and grammar checker, 
but also has the role of fact-checking. They are usually more detail-oriented than other types of editors, and often the type of editor that a writer will go to when checking their book ready for publication. You can't publish just yet, though, because you need to format your book. What does it mean to format your book? Have you ever picked up a leaflet and noticed that there are not pictures? It's just a load of text and really is not visually appealing? Those sort of things don't really get any traction. They're considered boring and don't actually offer anything that you can really get your teeth into. A formatter's job is to get the style of the book right. Does the font go with the type of book? For example, would you publish a sci-fi book set in outer space with some very fancy writing? You're more likely to use some sort of robotic style font. Is the first letter of each chapter inside your book a drop case or a larger or perhaps the same size? Does each chapter have the same type of chapter heading? Do they include pictures? What about the page break decorations? Those fancy little swirls at the end of each scene? Is your font the right height or type? And what about justification? In other words, does your text look nice and uniform on the page? Or is each line reminiscent of a bunch of ants that just walked through ink and crawled across the page? Publication. Once you've written and edited and formatted your book, if you want to sell it, you'll need to publish it. Publishing is the act of sending your manuscript to a publisher who will say yes or no, draw up a contract and then sell your book for you in bookshops. During Covid, the amount of self-publishers, otherwise known as independent authors or indie authors, shot up and there are a lot of people who upload their manuscript to online publishers such as Amazon, Google, Barnes & Noble, those people who make the nooks, Kobo Writing Life, Draft the Digital and more. It is then up to you to market your books. But marketing is not the same as advertising. Advertising is the act of creating an advert, usually consisting of a picture and some text with the name of your book, and quite often the book cover with links of where to download it. Marketing, however, is different. We live in a world with nearly 9 billion people, and if we all posted all the time, buy my book, buy my book, buy my book, it would be really, really boring, but it would also be really, really easy to con people. You could pretend that you have books and get them to give you your money. Because of this, people rarely buy books from authors they don't know because they don't trust them. They've never met them before, so it's a big learning curve. You build up that trust with your potential customers so that they will buy your books. However, before you even publish, you'll probably want someone else to try out your book and give you some feedback. These people are often called beta readers. A beta reader will give all sorts of feedback. Does your manuscript contain errors? or bits that just don't seem to go in the right places. Did they enjoy your book? Was it easy to read? What sort of star rating would they give it to you out of five? You can do things like this by joining various places such as Booksprout and other ARC reader platforms. ARC stands for Advanced Reader Copy and places such as Booksprout will allow you to upload your manuscript to be able to be read by other people. This will give an ARC reader the opportunity to be able to download your book for free. They'll be able to give you some sort of feedback and some places allow them to give you reviews before your book is even up for sale. This is brilliant because I've known some authors who've hit the first spot in their genre 
just after they've been published. World building. What is world building? When you go around daily life, you can see all sorts of things in your world, this planet Earth. When you write about them in your book, especially with fiction worlds, you'll want to make sure that they seem believable. World building is not just talking about buildings. We can all sit there and say, yes, it's a building made of bricks. But there's more to it than that. To draw the reader in, you need to break down what's actually inside your building. The smells, the sights, the sounds. Is it an eerie place where something strange or shocking might have happened? Is it a place that's loving, where people go around helping each other? Is it some other planet, for example? World building can include anything from an entire universe right down to a small room where someone will work all day. In the universe, you might be talking about the different planets that a spaceship will encounter in its journey around the stars. And the last one that I wish to tell you about is saving the cat. What on earth do I mean by saving the cat? Many years ago, a man named Blake Snyder noticed that after reading so many books, no matter how many different types and styles of books there are, they generally come down to the same sort of format throughout. Each book starts with a different step or beat. And these beats tend to include various things like introducing your characters, then giving them some sort of mission and problems along the way. Save the Cat was actually what Blake Snyder called it. Because in most books, there is a moment where, where an innocent will be saved. And some people take it literally and actually get our hero or our villain to save a literal cat. There are many, many more different terms and language for the writing world. And while I could spend a few hours telling you about them all, I just wanted to introduce you to the mainly used ones, and I've decided to put the rest of the ones that I found into the show notes for this podcast. If you love this show and want to become an official fan, you can for just £3 a month. By signing up, you get a shout out on the show, access to the private community on Patreon, and that great feeling of happiness, knowing that you're helping to support an independent author. Simply pop over to www.patreon.com slash the authors podcast about and show your support today. Next week's episode is The Six Senses, and I'll be talking about sight, sound, touch, taste, smell, and emotions. That's all for this week. If you've enjoyed this podcast, don't forget to click that subscribe button now. Also, if you know someone who would benefit from this podcast, don't forget to share the word. And I will see you next week for some more Authors Podcast About. Goodbye for now. Thank you.